Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on the circle breathing system. Introduction Rebreathing systems were originally developed to economize the use of cyclopropane. At a fresh gas flow of 5 liters per minute, this results in a wastage of more than 80% of anesthetic gases. If the fresh gas flow is decreased from 3 to 1 liters per minute, this results in a savings of about 50% of the total consumption of any volatile anesthetic. As rebreathing occurs, a means to absorb CO2 from exhaled alveolar gases must be present to avoid hypercapnia. Regarding the water system, this has been replaced by the circle system on most anesthetic machines. For further details, kindly refer to the discussion on the Mapleson C system. Components of the circle system A fresh gas flow inlet Fresh gas flow from the anesthetic machine feeds into the circle system between the soda lime canister distally and the inspiratory valve proximally. The reservoir bag is located on the inspiratory limb to reduce resistance to inspiration. Two unidirectional valves, each port to which the corrugated tubings are attached, has a unidirectional valve. The Y piece connector connects the tubes distally. The APL valve is positioned between the expiratory valve and the canister, it is located at the expiratory limb of the circuit so that CO2 containing exhaled gases are expelled through it. If it were to be located at the inspiratory limb, fresh gas flow would be wasted as it is vented out before being inhaled by the patient. The APL valve is connected to a reservoir bag. CO2 absorbent canister. The canister is mounted on the anesthetic machine it is situated after the APL valve in the circuit. The canister has two ports, one to deliver inspired gases to the patient and the other to receive exhaled gases from the patient. Corrugated tubing Inspiratory and expiratory corrugated tubing connected to the canister conducts gases to and from the patient. The corrugated design makes it kink resistant. Vaporizer It is positioned either in or out of the circuit. A switch Position between the reservoir bag and the ventilator to switch between the two. A ventilator. Disposable circle breathing systems exist. They employ a coaxial inspiratory tubing. The inner tubing delivers fresh gas flow from the anesthetic machine to the patient. The outer tubing delivers recircled gas flow. Both gas flows mix at the distal end of the coaxial tube. A more rapid change of the inhalational gas and vapor concentration at the patient's end can be made with this system. Mechanism of action Fresh gas flow with or without volatile anesthetic agent enters the circle system between the CO2 absorber and the inspiratory limb. The gases then travel through a one-way non-return valve to the patient. These are discs resting on a knife's edge to allow unidirectional gas flow and prevents mixing of inspired and expired gases. The valves are usually mounted on transparent glass or plastic domes so that valve malfunction can be detected if they are seen sticking. These valves should be checked both at the pre-anesthetic check of the machine and during anesthesia for sticking. Expired gases enter the expiratory limb and passes through another one-way non-return valve. Excess expired gas is vented out through the APL valve. The APL valve may be located close to the patient or beside the CO2 absorber. The latter position is more convenient for the anesthetist. The remaining gases passes through the CO2 absorber, for example soda lime, and flows back to the inspiratory limb. CO2 absorber removes CO2 via an exothermic chemical reaction with heat and moisture produced as byproducts of the reaction. Warm and humidified gases from the CO2 absorber joins the fresh gas flow to be delivered to the patient. The vertical position of the soda lime canister prevents channeling of gases through unfilled areas. Thus, a large canister may be used and the soda lime needs to be changed less often as it does not contribute to dead space. Large canisters are more efficient than small canisters due to the higher liters of CO2 per kg weight capacity. Two CO2 absorber canisters stacked in series used simultaneously is more efficient than a single absorber. If soda lime is used, its pH of 13.5 changes to less than 10 as it absorbs CO2 and the indicator dye changes color, 
this is a sign to replace it with new soda lime. Kindly refer to the video on CO2 absorbers for further details. The circle system can be used for both spontaneous and controlled ventilation. The circle system can be used as a closed system or a semi-closed system. In a closed system, expired gases and volatile agents recirculate. No more oxygen is added than is required for the patient's metabolic demands. Fresh gas is introduced only to replace oxygen consumed by the patient and anesthetic agents lost through leaks, absorption or metabolism. Volatile anesthetic agents are delivered by vaporizers located either outside or inside the circuit. CO2 is removed by soda lime as gases passes through it. Prolonged anesthesia using circle systems with nitrous oxide can cause hypoxia. In a closed system where a fresh gas flow of 1 liter per minute is delivered, where 0.25 liters per minute is oxygen, at the end of one tidal volume breath, the delivered oxygen will be absorbed, leaving the alveoli filled with 100% nitrous oxide. After 10 to 15 minutes, oxygen is taken up in larger volumes than nitrous oxide. Once equilibrium is achieved, nitrous oxide uptake is still 100 mL per hour after 2 hours. This nitrous oxide dilutes the oxygen in the next breath and progressive dilution of oxygen causes hypoxia. A hypoxic gas mixture may be delivered if low flow rates of a nitrous oxide oxygen mixture is supplied. Thus, it is wise to flush the system with oxygen periodically to avoid hypoxia from nitrous oxide accumulation. Nitrous oxide must not be used in circle systems if the total fresh gas flow is less than 1 litre per minute unless FiO2 is measured continuously. Monitoring of the inspired concentrations of oxygen, carbon dioxide, volatile anesthetic agent and nitrous oxide continuously is essential when using the circle system to avoid delivering hypoxic gas mixtures and inadequate anesthesia. In a fully closed system, monitors which measure inspired gas and volatile concentrations should be placed as close to the patient as possible. In a semi-closed system, a higher fresh gas flow than is required for the patient's metabolic demands or basal oxygen requirements is used in the circle system. Excess gases is vented through the pressure relief spill valve. Although circle systems can operate as a closed breathing system, in practice they are almost always used as a semi-closed system. This is because it is difficult to estimate the patient's oxygen uptake accurately and therefore fresh gas flow supplied is usually greater than the patient's gas uptake. The concentrations of gases and volatile anesthetic agents in the fresh gas supply are closer to those in the circle system and can be changed more quickly. This represents a compromise between economy and speed of altering depth of anesthesia. Volatile anesthetic agents may be delivered to a circle system in two ways via a vaporizer outside of the circle or a vaporizer inside the circle. VOC Plenum vaporizers are used as vaporizer outside circle. Positive upstream pressure drives the gas. They have a high internal resistance. They deliver volatile agent from the back bar of the anesthetic machine. Plenum vaporizers are unsuitable for use within circle breathing systems as VIC. Kindly refer to the video on vaporizers for further details. Altering the depth of anesthesia in circle systems using a VOC. At high fresh gas flow rates, high FGF is employed to denitrogenate the circle system and FRC of the patient during the initial period of induction of anesthesia to avoid unacceptable levels of nitrogen in the system. The fresh gas flow can then be reduced later for low flow anesthesia. Diod anesthetic vapor concentrations is achieved quicker with high fresh gas flow. Thus, increase FGF rather than vapor concentration to effect a more rapid change in the depth of anesthesia. At low FGF, the total volume of the system is about 5 liters, including breathing hoses, air in the CO2 absorber, reservoir bag, and the patient's functional residual capacity. Large changes in doubt concentrations are achieved very slowly at low fresh gas flows, less than 1 liter per minute in a circle system. The change in concentration of volatile anesthetic agents achieved in the circle system is very small because of dilution, even if the vaporizer is set to deliver a high concentration. 
Immediate delivery of low flows at 1 liter per minute after intubation and connection to the circle system would result in inadequate anesthesia and severe cardiovascular and respiratory depression due to the delivery of hypoxic gas mixtures if nitrous oxide is used. The very rapid initial uptake of nitrous oxide of 450 ml per minute if used and the volatile agent during the early part of the anesthetic can result in reduced anesthetic gas partial pressures in the system. This risks inadequate anesthesia due to the large volume of a circle system. If the system is filled with air initially, low flow rates of anesthetic gases are diluted substantially and adequate concentrations cannot be achieved. Even if the system is primed with a mixture of anesthetic gases, the initial rapid uptake by the patient results in decreased concentrations of anesthetic agents in the system. Thus, high fresh gas flows of 3 to 4 liters per minute must be used for the first 10 to 15 minutes to avoid inadequate anesthetic depths. High flow rates may be reduced subsequently. When using circle systems, it is essential to continuously monitor inspired concentrations of oxygen, inhaled anesthetic agent, and expired concentrations of CO2. The concentration of volatile anesthetic agent in the system depends on the patient's expired concentration, which is recycled, the rate of uptake by the patient, which decreases with time and is lower with agents of low blood gas solubility coefficient, the concentration of volatile agent supplied, fresh gas flow rate, whether a coaxial inspiratory tube design is used. A VOC will always show a higher concentration than is being inspired unless equilibrium has been achieved. Vaporizer inside circle or VIC Draw over vaporizers can be used within a circle. Ventilator or patient's spontaneous respiration generates sub-atmospheric pressure distal to the vaporizer and draws gas through the system. These vaporizers have minimal resistance to flow Increased volatile anesthetic concentrations result from increased minute volume of the patient, decreased fresh gas flow, increased ambient temperature, and accidental spillage of vaporizer contents into the circuit. Kindly refer to the video on vaporizers for further details. There is risk of delivering very high concentrations of volatile anesthetic agents with the use of VIC. The vapor concentration rises at low flows. Fresh gas flow is vapor-free unlike in the VOC system. Fresh gas flow that enters a VIC system dilutes the inspired vapor concentration. The inspired anesthetic vapor concentration is higher at low fresh gas flow rates because the expired concentration is diluted to a lesser extent. Anesthetic vapor is being added to each inspiration at low flows. The vaporizer adds to the concentration present in the expired gas. The risk of delivering very high concentrations of volatile agent is increased if the minute volume is large. This risk is greatest if IPPV is used. In a spontaneously breathing patient, respiration is depressed with deepening anesthesia and thus uptake of the anesthetic agent is reduced. This acts as a feedback safety mechanism. However, this mechanism is lost in intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Using a VIC system is ill-advised unless inspired concentrations of the anesthetic agents are monitored continuously. IPPV must never be used with a VIC system due to the risk of generating very high concentrations of volatile agent unless inspired concentrations of the anesthetic agents are monitored. Advantages of the circle breathing system Inspired gases are humidified and warm. It is economical. Circle systems are particularly useful for long cases because it conserves anesthetic gases, heat and moisture efficiently. There is minimal pollution as anesthetic gases are recycled. Low flow anesthesia can be employed. There is low dead space. The mechanical dead space created by the Y-piece tubing between the patient and the unidirectional valves is no greater than that in non-rebreathing systems. There is low risk of soda lime dust inhalation unlike water circuit as the soda lime canister is distant from the patient's airway. Disadvantages and safety issues of the circle system Cumbersome equipment It is less portable and bulkier than the Maperson systems and it is difficult to clean. There is risk of delivering hypoxic mixture. When fresh gas flow rate is low, 
recycled exhaled gases dilutes the fresh gas flow and FiO2 falls. As oxygen uptake remains constant, PO2 in the next expiration is even lower than it was in the first. Fresh gas flow is then diluted further by low oxygen containing exhaled gases. FiO2 may continue reducing down to dangerous levels unless a high FiO2 is set at the flow meters. Risk of awareness Recycled expired gases progressively dilute the fresh gas flow, risking hypoxia and awareness. Awareness due to inadequate anesthesia can occur, especially during the initial rapid uptake of volatile anesthetic post-induction. When FGF is low immediately post-induction of anesthesia, the concentration of the volatile anesthetic reduces progressively due to absorption by the patient, metabolism, absorption by the materials in the circuit, and leaks. The rate of reduction of the volatile anesthetic slows down over time when the patient uptake reduces as equilibrium is approached. Increased resistance to breathing. Increased work of breathing occurs during spontaneous ventilation. Contributors to airway resistance in circle systems include the unidirectional valves, which is the main contributor, dust formation, for example, from soda lime, long tubings, and the soda lime canister. Slow change in the depth of anesthesia. Doubt vaporizer output concentrations take a long time to equilibrate with the circle system especially at low fresh gas flows. Risk of hypercapnia, for example, if the CO2 absorbent is exhausted. Risk of unidirectional valve sticking, this may be due to water vapor condensation. A significant increase in dead space occurs if the valves stick and fail to close. This will cause hypercapnia in the patient. Risk of leaks or disconnections as circle systems has many connections. The complexity of the connections make identification of sources of leaks difficult and time-consuming. The circle system is not ideal for use in pediatric patients breathing spontaneously. Soda lime is corrosive. Wear protective clothing, gloves, eye and face protection when handling soda lime. Some inhalational agents may interact with soda lime and other strong base containing CO2 absorbers to produce potentially toxic substances, such as compound A, carbon monoxide, and substances such as methane, acetone, ethanol, and hydrogen. Barra lime has been implicated in causing fires within breathing circuits when used with sevoflurane. CO2 absorbers become inefficient if the canister is filled unevenly, as channeling of gases occurs via low resistance routes. Kindly refer to the video on CO2 absorbers for further details. These are my references. Thank you.